everyone. Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. Actor Ricky Whittle is here today to discuss his role as Shadow Moon in The American Gods, a one hour drama adapted from Neil Gaiman's best selling novel about a war brewing between old gods and new gods. In the new season of the Star series, the battle moves towards crisis as the destinies of gods and men collide. Take a look. When people first came to America, they brought us with them. We are the ancient ones. Then they built churches, cathedrals, or they erect a stone circle. Dear God, I hope you got the letter and I pray you can make it better down here. Gradually they abandoned us. Old, forgotten gods. Now there are new gods growing in America. I can't And they want to destroy us. War's a coming, Shadow. I have a big role for you. Time to ride. Where am I? Did that happen? There's something special going on here, and I feel a part of it. He is dangerous. I need you to believe that. There's always a cost with him. Just haven't paid it yet. The war begins. And you want to take him out? No, you take them all out. This is America. The greatest story ever told. Are we ready? Put your hands together for Ricky Whittle. Thank you for having me. How you doing today? Um, <laughs> someone asked me this earlier and I was like, I'm a little bit tired, but then I figured it out because I'm kind of going through this, uh, the press tour for, yeah. for the second season. And so when I traced it back, I was in um, Florida, Toronto, Florida, Chicago, London, Paris, Munich, LA, now here, then I have to go to Texas. And so my body doesn't really know what time it is. Right. So when I got up at five this morning, my body kind of might have thought it was two. So I'm up at 2 a.m. and just doing interviews. So I'm just trying and praying that I don't say something stupid. So I will never say I'm tired again. Because I woke up this morning, I was like, I'm tired. Oh, but you're actually but you, you, you tired. just wake up and just go... This is me. Oh, yeah. I did not wake up like this. Oh, it's, come uh, on. You wake up like a queen. You're involved. stunding. Shout Beautiful. out to Aaron. You always take care of me, girl. Uh, so let's talk about American Gods. This show is... One, I think, visually stunning and beautiful. Yeah. Really don't see a lot of uh, movies, or it looks like a movie, TV shows like this. And two, it is so complex and confusing in a way that I think keeps you locked in. So I gave a little description of the show in the, the run-up, but how do you describe American Gods? Epic. <laughs> Mind-bending. Performances. Mm. Beautiful, sexy, powerful. Yeah, yeah. Is that you working for it? anybody I, oh, else? I just heard a mm mm. <laughs> you know what it is. Mm -hmm. And lots of naked shadow moon. <laughs> so you see, you got a bigger shout there. Like, why are you applauding naked shadow? <laughs> no, I'm hungry all the time. When shadow's naked, just know that Ricky is not eating or drinking because he's got to look better. You're working our audience up into a dizzy, okay? I'm working on it. No, it's 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 an incredible show, and and um. You know, I, I play Shadow Moon, who's uh, an ex-con, and basically he's trapped in a world of gods, of, of leprechauns and, and dead wives, and he doesn't believe in any of them. Right. So he's very confused, as will the audience be, but as Shadow starts to figure it out, we let our audience figure it out together. So don't worry if you don't get it at first, you're not meant to. <laughs> if you do, you are crazy. <laughs> I was going to say, during a lot of the first season, Shadow is just confused a lot, which is fun for the viewer, because you're like, I don't know what's happening either. Exactly. So you're, through, you're in it together. And so yeah. season one, we, we've taught you how to watch the show. And we've taught you, uh, we've shown you the world. We've uh, introduced the world, the players. And so now that you know the world, now that you understand how we're showing you this show through Shadow's eyes, that you're allowed to be confused. He is our way of informing the audience how to feel. Right. If he's confused, we want you to feel confused. If we want you to feel happy, 
look at Shadow. He's going to give you that kind of uh, reaction. Um, season two, we get to move a lot faster. Now we've introduced all these players, you get to see them interact, which is going to be fun for the fans. And so the story moves a lot faster, and it's, it's, some, it's more linear, so you can follow it a lot easier now that we've established everything at first. And I know we're moving forward, but the show also does an amazing job at looking back. So are we going to get to know a little bit more of Shadow's backstory? Yeah, one of, one of the great things about season one was the, the coming to America stories of how gods uh, got to America. And Shadow Moon has his very own coming to America story in season two. Um, considering Shadow is the, the protagonist, we, we actually know the least amount about him, which is interesting for me as an actor because I kind of get to keep this mystique. And it's kind of the, the wink to the, you know, to the audience. I know something you don't know, and I do. Um, so keeping that mystique is important because everyone on the show does have secrets. Um, but one of the, the things is, is that Shadow is the universal punch bag in season one, he, and sadly even worse in season two. You know, spiritually, physically, emotionally, he's beaten down by all these different gods and, and beings and things, and just life in general. And he keeps getting up and moving forward. And in the flashback, we understand why, because we're going to see the true beauty, the true love in his life, his mother. And it's a great, great story where you see where his light comes from, where his hope and strength comes from. He was, it's also a way of seeing how far he's, he's fallen, you know, how much he's lost. He truly has lost everything in his world. When we first meet Shadow in season one, he's lost his wife. He grew up without a father. He lost his mother when he was very young, so he had nothing. And yet, you know, he keeps waking up every day and, and moving on. And he's very inspirational as a character. Um, and it's how we keep it relatable in a fantasy show. You know, you might not be into fantasy or sci-fi, but because you're just watching a human kind of go through things, um, you kind of go along with him on that journey. But So um, I'm looking forward to fans kind of empathizing. I can't even say it that early in the morning uh, with Shadow um, and just understanding where he came from. Yeah, Are there parts of Shadow that you identify with or things yeah. that are similar to you? Yeah, for sure. Um, Shadow is very much traveled. He grew up in Europe, uh, in France, in our, in our story, and moved to America when he was 15 and never fits in. He's a loner. He's, he's different. And as a kid, my father was in the Royal Air Force. And so every three years, I moved around. And it's why my accent's so messed up. Now, you listen to me, and you just go, but you sound like you're from England. <laughs> He's British. Um, yes, I am. But when I go home, I get serious amounts of abuse because I don't have an accent. It's a forces accent. So when I'm in the north, they think I'm from London. When I'm in London, they think I'm from Manchester. Um, but it's an amalgamation of different accents, of, of Scottish, Irish, to various parts of England. And it's a big old kind of mixture because every three years, I had to move to different countries around the world. Um, so I know what it's like to be different yeah. and to not fit in. And, and you know, I'm basically an immigrant everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. Um, but you assimilate, you know, you, you're very, you become very good at blending in and, and, and making friends. And I think it made me very outgoing. It kind of gave me a wider spectrum of, of, of friends and cultures and beliefs and stuff. You know, I, I feel very much like I lived Shadow's life of yeah. dipping into everyone's different cultures in different countries and seeing the beauty and everything um, that Shadow's now learning. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely relate. And, I, and like Shadow, I, I like to think, you know, my mom's my queen and she raised me. Um, Fortunately, I had a, a wonderful father who was my idol as well, but Shadow just had a strong, beautiful black woman just doing it her, her own way, and she raised a, you know, a fantastic young man in Shadow, and, and I was very fortunate to be surrounded you know, with love. and um, Yeah, you, you, as an actor, you try and bring a little bit of yourself right. to a character. Um, that was possibly the hardest thing to do, though, for Shadow, because, number one, he's, he's, he's American and I'm British, so you've got to switch that up, but he's very stoic and quiet. I'm a bit of a goofball. Right. And so one of my challenges was to tone that down and to mm -hmm. keep the stillness um, and, and the humor. I wanted to make him funny, but you have to earn that. And, um, you know, he's lost everything. So I didn't want him to have that just yet. So season two, we get to kind of add a few more layers. Um, and moving forward, we kind of get to grow Shadow as a character and give him a, a bit more color. You also mentioned the physicality. Is that a real transformation uh, for you to, to play this role? Does it seem like yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, my, my, and this is where you're going to give me abuse, and some of the ladies will be like, oh, poor you. Oh, you had to eat? Oh, my God. Poor you. Your American accent's really good. I, I don't know why my go-to <laughs> is Valley Girl, but every time I say, 
<laughs> I oh just God. can't. I can't even. I can't even what? Finish a sentence? Say the rest. No, I you never can't even. I can't. I can't even. I can't even. even. Stop. Stop. What the hell? Like, I'm out of words. Oh, my God. Um, there was a question there, right? Oh, yeah. I don't remember. Uh, so, no, so, no. Um, but basically, during the show, um, before I started the show, I kind of sat at about 160, 165 uh, pounds. Shadow Moon in season one got up to 215 pounds. And that just involved 5,000 calories a day, uh, training two to four hours a day. Um, season two wasn't quite as bad because I managed to keep a lot of the weight on. But it was so far beyond my natural body weight, I, you know, I still had to work hard even in, during the hiatus. Um, and it's, it's not fun because when you're eat, overeating like that, your body becomes very lethargic. And when you're training, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of pressure on your joints and on your body getting used to that. Um, and it's not fun calories. It's not like burgers and pizzas. The first two weeks was burgers and pizzas. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but then after that, it's, it's clean eating. So it's, it's dry beef and dry chicken, brown rice, broccolis and things like that. And if anyone knows me, I live my life off meat and candy. Um, and I can't do that. You can't just put a sauce on your on your on your chicken or a bit of salt, you know stuff on your beef. It's or to add flavor because that starts to add the wrong kind of weight. And Shadow Moon, especially season two, Naked Shadow Moon, is in shape. So I had to eat a lot better, um, and it was a a physical triumph to get through it. Okay, you did a good job. Thank. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> Let's talk about the poster a little bit because uh, online, a lot of the fans have different ideas about what this poster is telling let, us. Can we, let, let's talk about the poster. Yeah. So I, I still, I'm still wondering why, and maybe, maybe uh, my my stars colleagues can tell me why that, that my my so my shirt in the show is actually a little bit see through. Oh yeah. Um, so you could no, but you could see everything. So. I just told you I worked my butt off trying to trying to look good. You could actually see abs and chest and torso and stuff. You saw a little nipple, but there's nothing wrong with nipple. It's stars. If you're worried about a little nipple, maybe you shouldn't watch the show. Um, no, do watch the show, no matter what. Even if you don't like nipples, they're, they're lovely nipples. Close your eyes. They're wonderful your nipples. Eyes. Watch, look at my nipples. Um, that sounded weird. So, uh, but yeah, they they smoothed it out. They smoothed it out. So I was like, um, I. I what, what was wrong with but it? Was it I was more like he's sort of in this crucifix stance. I mean, there's, 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 I mean, there's, there's deeper I mean, I, things, I, but I was all about the abs. I know, I'm talking about I this. Want the symbolism. Talk about the abs. I want, is this foreshadowing? Um, for, foreshadowing. It's foreshadowing. Look at you. Not just a pretty face, oh, you. Oh, you genius. That brain. Um, no, it's, I mean, it's, 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 Obviously, this comes from a very famous book. Neil Gaiman wrote this book of the same name in, uh, and released it in 2001. It was a bestseller worldwide, translated into 30 different languages. It was incredible. It is. Um, and incredibly, and, I mean, it, 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 it foreshadowed so much, um, you know, the, 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 all the topics and, and things that are, that are so relevant now and, and current in, in, in today's political climate were in his book in 2001 and in our show you know, before everything kind of hit the fan um, a couple of years back. But um, fans of the book will obviously be able to kind of really, you know, get into this poster. Um, for fans of just the show, we, we're very good at sprinkling Easter eggs. And this show is, is and this poster is, is very much uh, along this, uh, the same sort of vein, you know, it, it's, what what is kind of going on? You know, he's we all need a savior. Is is he a savior or is he being sacrificed there? What's Mr. Wednesday's plan? Um, or does he just like cars? Maybe he's sleepy. Maybe he has to eat five thousand calories every day and just needs a nap. Maybe he's just been bouncing from city to city and he's tired. Exactly, he's tired. He's he's just like you know what, Mr. Wednesday, I'm over it. I'm just gonna take a little snooze right here. Um, so the season starts. I got to see the first episode. And March March tenth. March tenth. March tenth. Yes. March tenth. But the whole crew is on the way to the house on the rock, which yes, is a are. real place. It and I didn't. No, it, it is a real place. And I literally would tell you or anyone at home, if you are ever by chance in Wisconsin, yeah. I don't know why you would be there. <laughs> Great cheese maybe, and football. Maybe I, you're gonna eat some cheese and watch the Packers play. Um, cause their team's really good or it used to be. Oh, <laughs> wow. I'm a Bears fan. All right. So wow. I'm allowed. I've been, I have been abused for the last <laughs> few years. Ever since I moved to this country, the Bears have sucked. Oh, yeah. Um, but now all of a sudden we've got a, a better team and we started to beat the Packers. So now it feels good to go. Yo, <laughs> how's, how's that feel? 
How's that feel? Yeah, I'm going to get lynched on the way out. I was going to um, say, you're going to get attacked. But this place is real. And when you see episode one, a lot of people, we're known for having special effects on the show and, and CGI. And people are going to think that we made this up. We're going to think this is all oh, a fantastic green screen. Everything you see is real. It's the largest carousel in the world. You have angel, topless angels with body parts from horses and other animals, like just scattered across the ceiling, staring at you in a real creepy way. You have a life-size mannequin full orchestra that plays creepy Russian music. Anytime you push a, a magic coin in, into, into a slot, I say magic, it's not really magic, it's just a coin, it's a token. Um, but you put a token in and it, all of a sudden it starts to play. It's, it's the most, it's got a huge life-size blue whale being attacked by a giant squid in this warehouse. And this place is huge. Huge. I mean, you've seen a blue whale. It's 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 a, it's it's massive, and every room just gets weirder and weirder. And I don't know why, but why every direction you walk in this house is uphill. <laughs> it's magical. Like I'm like, is there no downhill? <laughs> I walked up here, so surely to get back, I should be down. No, you walk up again. So my quads and my butt look real good <laughs> after that. Um, but it's 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 one of the tricks of the house. It's an architectural marvel, and. When you, when you see it, you're going to think it's fake, but just know that everything is real, and that house is truly incredible, and we barely even touched upon it. I was there a week and still didn't get around all of it. Wow. Place is phenomenal, um, and millions of people go through the doors kind of every year. It's, it's, it's nuts. I I, Neil Gaiman toned it down in a book because he didn't think people would believe it. We've shown you for how, how crazy that is. We've barely touched upon it. Mm -hmm. I literally cannot describe how weird and crazy that house is unless you go. It's phenomenal. I didn't know it was real, and I thought it was special effects. Yeah. And in my research, I was like, I've got to go to Wisconsin. It looks phenomenal. Uh, on the on the note of special effects, there are a lot. What are filming those scenes like? I mean, what is, what kind of headspace did you have to get in <laughs> pretending something's there that's clearly not there? So this is my uh, so I. I'm, I'm a young actor. It's not the most experienced. Um, so th this was actually my first time on blue green screen. Yeah. So when you use all the special effects and you're just literally just, you have a couple of props and then the rest of the room is green and blue around you and they add all the stuff, the background behind you. And so you get to really bring out the inner child in you and, and you get to kind of go to that headspace uh, and, and just... Just act, truly act, just be a kid again. You know, cops and robbers and cowboys and Indians, all, all this crazy stuff you used to play as a kid. Um, as long as the director doesn't mess you up in post and not uh, put what he's gonna put up there. Um, they need to give you the information. So as long as you know what's kind of going on, leave it to your imagination. But literally, you can, so season one, my first experience. I'm walking out and the director's screaming from me from the side. And he's like, so I'm, so you're walking through this cave and all I can see is just a twig. There's loads of skulls in, in a circle and then just like this, just kind of piece of wood. And he's like, that's a tree, that's the tree of life. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm walking towards that and I'm gonna see a buffalo. Okay, get it, I got you. This is where the trust comes in. So the director's going, Wow, the tree looks amazing. I'm like, wow, it's so good. It's, it's huge. I'm like, oh, wow, it's so huge. It's so wide, wide and, and expansive. Both sides, it's on both sides. It's massive. It is so good. There's a buffalo. There's a buffalo. No, behind the tree. Behind the tree. I'm looking. Oh, my God. It's bigger than that. Oh, no, it's bigger. It's up there. Yeah, he's walking towards you. You're, you're scared. Oh, I'm scared. But you're intrigued. Oh, I'm leaning forward. Oh, no, but you're more scared. Oh, I'm back again. And it says believe. You're shocked. Oh. And so you think your career is over. Right. Because you're like, that was awful. What, what, what did I just do? That was terrible, terrible. There's a guy walking towards me with, with two tennis balls like for, for, for like fire and stuff like this. And I'm like, I have no idea what I just did. Yeah. And you just have to hope and pray that in post, they will make it look magical. And thankfully, the show has the best post team and they put in all the special effects. They made the tree look incredible. There was a, a galaxy of stars in the sky. The buffalo was huge and furry and walking towards me, breathing. I could, I could almost smell, I, I could always smell his dirty breath and everything. I didn't know it was gonna be that close. Maybe I would have reacted to a, you know, maybe a smelly breath, but then it takes me out. Ne never mind, That's, this is just an actor not being happy with his work. It's fine, we're <laughs> never happy. We always wanna go back. My best scene is always in the car on the way home. Any actors normally, it's normally on the way home, they're kind of just going, 
why did I do that? I should have said that like that. No, what, 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 why are you doing the hand thing? You talk too much with your hands. Should have just stayed still. Should have just stayed still. Um, but in so, those yeah. situations, that's, it's, you just kind of have to do but the best that, yeah. you can so in those moments. It's, 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 it's wonderful to play with these toys. And, and for me, it's the best ensemble on TV. I get to play with all these incredible idols that I grew up watching. You know, Orlando Jones, Ian McShane, Peter Stamar, Janine Anderson, Pablo. Oh, Pablo Schreiber, one of the best actors I've ever worked with. Emily Browning plays my, my dead wife. Um, it sounds strange to anyone who doesn't know the show. Yeah. I'm like, so my dead wife, you know, but Emily just lies there. <laughs> but no, she comes back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a real joy to play with this, in, this incredible talented crew, uh, cast. The, the beautiful crew in Canada, in Toronto is where we shoot. Um, so it's full of, you know, Canadians, uh, the happiest people in the world, for no reason. <laughs> For cold. every reason. No. They got so, everything So New York's there. cold. Like, this is the, I, I, I had to, my style is big love, Sonia. I had to get a jacket because I live in LA, so we don't have functional jackets. We have a jacket that looks good. It's like, yeah, it looks good. But is it waterproof? <laughs> no. <laughs> I had to get a jacket for here. Toronto's even colder than New York. It's freezing cold. You have no reason to smile as much as you do, Canadians. Why are you so happy? Free health I couldn't care. feel my face. Free health care. Legal marijuana. I mean, what else Education. do you Education. You want me to keep going? I mean, you basically just... Just get a thicker coat. I mean, right? <laughs> I'm... I'm British. I'm with you there. Free health care, <laughs> education. Yeah, it's it's up there. Um, we're not quite there on the marijuana bit, but we, we'll we get... We'll get... We'll, we'll get, get there. It. No, so... I, I love life up there. You know, the, the, the stars have really thrown some money behind this, and it, it's an incredible source material. Neil Gaiman's an absolute genius, and, you know, the response has been fantastic. We've got beautiful fans around the world who've, who've really enjoyed the show, and I feel that, you know, season two will take us to another level. Yeah. And you mentioned the books really quick, and I know that the show stays true to the books in some ways, but definitely develops characters more. And, you know, Pablo's character, for instance, I know got a lot more love in the series. So going As into season should. two, are we going to see it stick closer to the book or deviate more? Or is it kind of going to be the similar? I dynamic? mean, there's two schools of thought, really. Um, se uh, season one, it, 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 it is the book. It's, it's following the book. There's parts of the book uh, that are in the show, um, and then we deviate. Season two is no different. We're following the book, and then we're going to deviate off. We, I, I've been calling it Marty McFly, the timeline. So when you change something, it means something can't happen in the future sometimes. So like when um, Mad Sweeney meets Laura, they've never met in the book. So all of a sudden, some things can't happen later on. Um, and then when you have like Mad Sweeney's only in the book twice, he features throughout the show because we have Pablo Schreiber. He's incredible. Let's use him. Mr. Nancy, Orlando Jones, he's got his own separate book. No, let's use him in this. It's Orlando Jones, people. You know, and then we've got, you know, new actors coming in. You know, your T.D. Badaki plays Bill Quist. Bruce Langley plays uh, Tech Boy. These characters are only very sporadic, but we've got fantastic talent. Let's use them. So your, your, your fans of the book are getting everything they loved in the book, but then so much more. And I think that's why the response has been so positive. For people who are just fresh to the show, you're just going to get to enjoy all these incredible characters. And so being Shadow, I get to kind of be the thread that ties everyone together. So fortunately, I get to kind of play with all these incredible toys. And season two is no different. Sakina Jaffrey comes in, Dean Winters, Devery Jacobs, uh, Kayum Kim, who plays uh, New Media. Um, we're just constantly evolving. And you know, we just get this, this amazing talent just coming through the doors. And you know, I really, truly think that the book fans will love the show because there's all the books in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's not chronological. We keep throwing stuff for later on and then we keep bringing stuff forward in, uh, in the book. But fans of the show are going to really enjoy it because it's, it's easier to follow. You're now invested in these characters and we're going to keep on in introducing all the new characters. And there's so much more in Neil's book that we can kind of put out there. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the response. Yeah, definitely. I am too. Like I said, I got to check out the first episode and I'm locked in. I'm already w wishing for a season three, so. Well, as, as are we all, <laughs> as are we all. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun to kind of play this journey out. Yeah, well, we do have a couple questions. Uh, on Twitter, at WhittleFam wants to know, Ricky, most characters in American Gods are sourced for mythology, so there are certain expectations as to who they are. The only source for Shadow Moon is the novel. What was it like stepping into those shoes and rediscovering Shadow as your own? That's a really good question. <clears throat> That's the one thing. Oh, hello. Um, one of those um, 
one of the best things about our fans is, and the show is it's a thinker. You know, it's it's we we don't spoon feed you. We know you're intelligent, and so you get great questions like this. Um, no, but at the end of the day, it's 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 a book that was released, you know, 17 years ago, 18 years ago, when we when we were doing the show. Um, the characters are almost biographies now because they've lived with this character. That like when I first got the role, people were so positive. They're like, oh my gosh, it's like it's like Shadow Moon stepped off the page. You're exactly as I imagined him. It's my favorite book. It's my favorite character. Don't mess it up. <laughs> I'm like, There's no pressure. Wow. Um, so you, you want to stay true to the book, and so you try and, you know, you read the book and, and you work with um, the material you've got. And, you know, Neil Gaiman's given me fantastic kind of advice as well in person. Um, but what we did in season one was work with Brian Fuller and Michael Green to bring a slightly heightened version of the character in the book. In the book, he goes through a lot of internal monologue, and you don't want to watch a man think every week. Um, so we kind of had to make him more vocal, and we, we kind of use him to sh inform the audience about what, it, what they should be thinking. So we needed Shadow to be more than just what he is in the book. So he shows more frustration, anger, you know, sadness, happiness, whatever it is. And so during the audition process, I worked with Brian and Michael for, for a good five months, um, kind of really developing this character. And all those kind of talks will probably never be aired, but um, if it wasn't for them kind of giving me that fa fantastic solid base to to build this character. I mean, one of the nicest things, Michael Green texted me just literally last week and it made me tear up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna own up. You made me tear up, Michael. Um, and, and Brian, they said, look, we love Shadow, but we love Ricky. And if you can bring a little bit of that together, that's the character we want for the book. Um, Ricky's too much for the book. <laughs> a little bit loud, bring it down. But also bring Shadow up a little bit. And if you can amalgamate those two, then that's the character we, we need moving forward. Um, and then, fortunately, I can kind of add layers in as we go. You mentioned the original showrunners. And I know behind the scenes, there's been some shuffling. And going into season two, they're not there anymore. How has that impacted how you approach the role or how the cast approaches the um, show? It doesn't affect the cast per se, because for me, I feel I have my own responsibility to keep Shadow's continuity. Uh, the, the actors are fantastic actors. They know their characters. They live with them for a whole season. So for three years now, we know our characters. So anyone coming in uh, and in, in future, it's a collaboration. You know, you want to get on the same page. And so, you know, we work with our incredible writers and, and, and Jesse Alexander, who got us to season two. And you try and find the truth. You're trying to find that voice um, because they'll come at it and go, here's your scene, and you go, mm, he wouldn't say that, she wouldn't say that, and it's like, okay, what would they say, what would they do? And then you start to work together, and you bring it out, and you, and you work it together. So um, for us, it was uh, it was tougher, for sure, but it's it's just something that every every kind of show does, you know, every movie does, it's, there's always comes and goings, um, and fortunately, I don't feel uh, that the fans are going to really notice too much of a difference, uh, especially in the look, because of uh, Chris Byrne, who's our executive producing director, who worked with Brian and Michael in season one, and Brian previously on, on Hannibal. So he's kind of one of the men responsible for keeping that uh, unique, rich tone, and that feel that we had um, throughout season two. So fortunately, fans, I don't feel will we'll notice too much of a difference. Um, hopefully, you're too distracted by the phenomenon. <laughs> for, for, it is so early. Phenomenal performances of our wonderful cast. Phenomenal. Oh, we easy have, for you to say. I, <laughs> She's beautiful, intelligent, she can I speak. I just wanted to rub it in. <sighs> uh, we'll throw to the audience for a question. Be up first. Right there. Uh, hey, what's up? Hey, I really you loved your character. I just got into this um, through the show a couple years ago. Yeah. It was one of the most impactful shows in terms of writing because I feel like the pacing is great. I wanted to ask you... What is your personal uh, favorite mythological creature or god? Wow. <laughs> See what I mean when I say questions? I've on previous shows. Previous shows, it's like, what's your favorite color? <laughs> what are you looking for in a girl? I can't even. I can't even. <laughs> but we've got some fantastic fans. Um, oh, my goodness. There's so much. Um. <sighs> One of the great things about this show is that I'm learning, uh, like I think a lot of our audience does as well, um, about different cultures, mythologies, and, and, and theories and things. Um, so what I've been learning about, and is because I, I, I grew up like a, a Roman Catholic, so um, I kind of had, I was raised by nuns in schools, which was 
kind of weird sometimes. Um, they'd pull me out, the, out of class to draw pictures. I was, it was very strange. I'm like, what about my mathematics? Right. Um, and so I'm learning about all these beautiful beliefs and cultures and religions and stuff. And so in season two, we get to meet um, Sam Crow, a very famous part of, of the book, a character in the book who's a, a First Nation uh, indigenous character. And so I've been learning from Devery Jacobs, who plays Sam Crow, who is herself First Nation. And she's been teaching me all about their beautiful culture uh, that's truly indigenous to America. Um, Orlando Jones as well. I mean, I, I, th I sound like I'm fanboying about Orlando, but you know what? Yeah, I am. Squee, love him, <laughs> love him. Um, but he's been teaching me about Anansi and all the, all those, all the African gods along with Yatide. And I, it's great that, yeah, I'm entertained, but I'm also learning on, on my job about these beautiful cultures because the great thing about the show is we, we teach you how they can coexist. And just because you have a God, it doesn't make my God any less real. You know, they, they kind of work together. And in fact, on our show, gods are terrible people. <laughs> they, they're, they're the most flawed of our show, you know, because they're extraordinary beings in ordinary circumstances. Uh, and they're living with everyday problems, which is fascinating. Um, so for me, just learning about, you know, uh, Nancy and, and all these kind of other gods that, that, that are coming th coming through. Um, you've stumped me there, you know. I'd have to sit there and think, I'm going to catch you in about five minutes after this, and I'm going to be like, yeah, that, that one. But I love but that answer because great. in all those different cultures, you find gods that are very similar, and they overlap, you know, like, well, we're, we're we all, all sort of believe the in the same, same thing. Things. We're arguing yeah. about the same thing, and for me, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you or who you believe in, as, as long as you believe in something, which is what our show's saying. You know, if it's your favorite song, if it's a family member, a, a movie, a, a, a poem, a, a passage, a god, a goddess, whatever it is you believe in, we've all got struggles. We're all trying to get through our day. It's cold out there. You just want to make sure you get home and you get through this day. Any day we wake up, yeah. boom, you're winning. Yeah. Anytime you get back to your bed at the end of a day, boom, you're winning. And whatever it takes to get you through that struggle in that day, it's got nothing to do with me, what you, what, what you need what you believe in. So just show, you know, shine the light, see the beauty in everything. And, and you know, it, it shouldn't affect your world. You know, I shouldn't have a say in how you live your life, you know, as long Preach. as you're not hurting people. Preach. And we have one more question. It was probably 20 million questions, but I talk way <laughs> too much. <laughs> Okay, I know that. You're standing for this as well. This yes. Oh, I thought wow, we were okay. supposed to. I don't know. No, no I, feel, you're good. I feel very honored. Thank you. Thank you, my lady. I'm actually very nervous. I apologize. Don't be nervous. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. Um, I know that you had said that there's a lot of details and scenes that some will be similar and some will be different from the book and the show. I didn't know if you knew yet, though, if... Shadow's overall arc and his identity and his purpose in the story would be the same as what it was in the book? Um, what's revealed about him? So basically uh, what we're able to do is play, play with things. Um, and things that will happen in the book can come at you in different ways. Um, so, we are not that far down the line yet. We're just kind of building each character and we're building story. And that's, yeah, we have a, a story. We have incredible source material, but we are also seeing fantastic chemistries and dynamics, which changes stuff. So all of a sudden you're like, wait a second, Mad Sweeney and Laura, they're hilarious together. Now they're a thing. They don't meet in the book. You know, you, Nancy and Ibis, wait a second, that's a thing? Wait. Bill Quiss is in there as well. You're seeing these things, and so it needs to be you know, fluid. It needs to be able to move and evolve. And so that's why I say we, we're, we're doing the book, but it's also got room to breathe and to maneuver and Marty McFly a little bit. Don't, I don't know why I'm saying Maybe it's because Crispin Glover's in the show. Um, I keep Back to the Future references flying in. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's, there's a lot of um, nods uh, to, to, to various moments from the book. Um, and we try and keep the special moments, the, the truly large moments and, and, and uh, occasions real and, and, and true, but uh, we've got a lot of room to play. Um, this show could run two, three, four, five seasons. You'd never know. He, Neil wrote so much in so many different directions. He wrote kind of, sequ uh, he's writing a sequel to the book. He wrote uh, a Nancy Boys, Mark of the Glenn. He, he's got so much material. So we, it depends on how that kind of, 
starts to spiral. So you're saying Shadow could have a different ending? Shadow could very much have a different ending. He, he, I mean, he could end up in the Avengers. <laughs> and then we get Shadow dating Black Widow. I'm just saying um, worlds could collide. Studios, if you're listening. I'm just saying maybe Shadow could be in the Justice League. Maybe <laughs> Shadow could be a Charlie's Angel. I don't know. Um, there is room to maneuver. I love that. Well, uh, I loved American Gods. Like I said, it is such a ride. It forced me to be locked in and pay attention, which a lot of shows don't make you do that yeah, anymore. Yeah, you, you kind of put your phone down and you're like, wait, I need the phone. Yeah, you're like, on. I Did need she to. Just, what, what? Exactly. Yeah. Which I think is a rarity on TV and it makes it really fun to watch. Thank so, you. guys out there, if you want to check out season two of Season Gods, premieres on Sunday, March 10th at 8 p.m. on Stars and will be available on the same day on the Stars app. Give it up for Ricky Whittle. Thank you very much. Thank you.